not even worried about the shocks. It's because one time I took a soft loss and I thought this will be something that I'll be good at. This looks fun. This looks cool. Everyone would be like, oh, you're in LA. This is cool. And then I took a soft loss and I think I got maybe 12 inches into the water and then I just ate shit. <laughs> Yo, put my name on it. Everything I own, forever, ever. Everything I touch and turn to go on a different level. Nothing that is ever in my zone. That ain't success. I'm here to show you that I am the GOAT and claim a medal. <laughs> yeah, that is now when it's This never is the Real Vibe Podcast. Yeah, now when it's never better. The Real Vibe Podcast, Aaron and Jacoby. Hey, man, what's up? How are you, Bubba? I'm good, yourself? Yeah. Fantastic. We are at the ASL Studios, the video podcast studios. Uh, I love this place, by the way. This do you know this is, is just blocks place. from MSG? Madison Square Garden is just right there. I just read that on that. Oh, I thought, this I thought you said this place York, was chucked full of MSG. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa, okay. It's well, it's, ordered so tasty. Uh, but yeah, we are just right here, uh, just blocks from Madison Square Garden, blocks from the Empire State Building at a beautiful really cool. podcasting and uh studio and uh we got jerry lee with us today on the Hi. show hey welcome thank you, you excited to be here yeah so you've already been doing a little bit of something in here today uh mm-hmm. we, i actually call them the white room sessions mm-hmm. um where we just kind of get to know you and everyone said you are really gonna like talking to jerry she mm-hmm. is a ton of fun so oh, that could be a good or bad thing you know I, I i will leave it up to you to decide uh what it is so i love here you have one of the most diverse bio lines i've ever seen thank you mm-hmm. model musician mm-hmm. social media entrepreneur actor and former journalist and is how, there anything you can't that's do. what i was gonna say so <laughs> tell me something you're not good at so i feel a little bit better about myself uh, um, i cannot soft i'd really like to but the ocean doesn't and being that you're in Southern California, I'm assuming it's something that staring at the ocean, you're like, I'd like to learn to do this more. Yeah, the ocean is a scary place. Yeah, I, I don't swim we, in the ocean. No. We grew up on the movie Jaws. We yep. are mm-hmm. very afraid of the ocean. Oh, I'm not even worried about the sharks. It's because one time I took a soft loss and I thought this will be something that I'll be good at. This looks fun. This looks cool. Everyone would be like, oh, you're in L.A. This is cool. And then I took a soft loss and I think I got maybe 12 inches into the water and then I just ate shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was on this like giant soft pod and then it was too big for me. I'm fine at swimming. So I was like, what's going on? And then I tried again. Same thing happened. I was just drowning in like a foot of water. I was like, how is this even possible? And they're like, you like have to go, go out, swim farther and then try to get on the board. I was like, I cannot get on the board. It's like, dragging me beneath this foot of water and I'm drowning and I don't know how. And you're thinking, well, if a foot is bad, six to eight feet of water is oh, not going to be any better. Yeah, he was like, no, 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 no. Like the, the instructor was like, come, like I'll, I'll drag your softball. You can just paddle. I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm going to die. And then I made up a really bad excuse as to why I had to leave <laughs> this one hour softing lesson 20 minutes in. Well, can I ask what was, <laughs> what the, was the excuse? Ex- what was the excuse? I don't even know. I think I was just like, I just got to go. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I'm sorry. I just, something came up. I like got an upset was, stomach. I'm yeah, really it was like leave. the ocean trying to kill me was what came up. <laughs> but the thing is, it was a one hour soft lesson and I left maybe 20 minutes in and you have to realize the first 15 minutes are just getting the wetsuits on and them telling so you so you'd, you'd been in the water for five minutes and realized this Maybe is not for me 10 minutes to be generous and i was like this is just not happening so it took you twice as long to put on the outfit <laughs> as it did for you to go this ain't for me yeah they, they had <laughs> us do this instruction on the beach that was just you know practicing getting on the board practicing paddling. And, i was yeah, like yeah. none of those things were things i did in the ocean <laughs> because the ocean did not want me in it it's like the it's the Moana moment. Right. The you ever skied? Ski. You ever try to like ski like behind a boat? Um, I've skied on snow on a mountain. It was also okay. terrible. I've never um, done. No, I've I was going to say on a behind a boat. That? No, no, I was not good at that. I I went to a mountain with my parents. It was probably a really easy slope. I kill it on the bunny slope. I'm actually good at that. If I do anything else, I go up the charlift, and then I actually had a bad accident. Um, because I just wasn't ready for anything above the bunny slope, and I ended up getting, like, third-degree frostbite. Um, it was actually really embarrassing. I got stuck on a mountain because I crashed into someone, and then they just didn't do anything about it. They left me, though. And then I was just stuck on a slope. It was too steep for me to ski the rest of the way. It was not steep, actually. It's just steep for me. Um, and then I had took my skis off, but then I kept falling down, so I didn't have my skis. 
And then I took my gloves off because I was trying to get my other ski off and then my gloves were gone. So I just ended up getting frostbite because my hands were totally exposed. There was no one around and I was yelling for help um, because the mountain was closing down. And I think someone finally hugged me because they came up to get me in one of those emergency snowmobile things. So I was just wow. bundled up in that going down. And I think my parents thought I was dead when they saw this coming down. But How it was long just were you stuck cold. out there? I don't think I was out for maybe more than 20 minutes, actually. But um, but out I, in the cold, that's a long time. Yeah, because I, I had, like, wet hands in the snow. Um, and where was this? This was in Connecticut. This was, like, a baby mountain. This probably happened to no one in this area. <laughs> I was like, it were was, you on Mount Everest? Where no, were you at? You know? No, I just had a bad experience. And then ever since then, I, I just don't like skiing. I've gone one time close to Montreal, and I fell. And, and then I was living this childhood trauma, which... I don't think is even that bad, but I was just like, I do not want to be going downhill <laughs> on a steep slope. I don't like going fast and I don't like high altitude. So two things. Two things that you don't like. Combined. Mother nature yeah. does not like Jerry. Yeah. yeah, yeah I mother nature yeah. in general is just not. The earth is not your friend. No. <laughs> Can you grow things? Like do you have a green thumb at least? Kind of. Well, there you go. I like rock climbing. I got into that this summer. That's more heights. But it's okay because it's safe, kind huh. of, because there's ropes. I've seen, I, I've seen where don't, it's not so safe. Don't go there. Just you've, you've seen I know where you're going. No, 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 I'm talking don't about go there. no, no. I'm I'm going indoors in like oh, a like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. okay. climbing gym. Yeah, oh, I'm that's for different. that. I'm you, all for that. No, yeah. that's safe. That, I mean, if you fall, you hit a pad. That's one thing. I thought you were Still like, safe. I, I completely thought like it's big safe. boulder, Jerry's yeah, hanging on one the side. No, I'm, just, I'm out, scared yeah. of the ocean and mountains, but I'm going to go alone outside in a rock and climb That's that. That's why I didn't, it didn't make no. sense. Yeah. Yeah, I just thought you lived on the wild side. Yeah. Uh, no, that would be, that'd be unreasonable. Adrenaline junkie. <laughs> so when you introduce yourself to somebody, how do you explain who, what you do and where you're from? To be honest, I don't. Uh, I don't try to explain myself. I just think that no one cares. So I'm always... Oh. <laughs> so anytime... Um, this happens on LA too because when... Or even in New York when people ask like, like, what do you do? People always want to know about your career. But mm -hmm. I'm like, I think that's boring. So I'm just like, oh, I like rock climbing. <laughs> and they think I'm like a hobo or something. So Colorado... <laughs> She walks around barefoot a lot. That's that's where they're going. No, yeah, I'm, they're just like, but but what do you do? I'm like, I like to climb rocks. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> that is kind of a smart marketing thing, though. It's it almost is. like a man of mystery type of yeah. And thing. then people are like, why didn't you mention that you do these things? I'm like, because I do them, but I also like to climb rocks. Like, I don't know, like, <laughs> you 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 open like it with the, the thing you're most passionate about, as far as like your fun side, the fun thing you like to do that's not attached to the work side. True, that has zero stakes. Yeah. yeah. No, because I'm not even good at rock climbing. I just, I started this summer, so I'm still very bad. I don't have the tendon strength yet that yeah. apparently you need, which is crazy. Like, why would you need to strengthen your tendons? But um, it is a fun thing. I would say I'm probably most passionate about music, but I also don't talk about that very much. So, Well, can we talk about it? Yeah. I mean, there's not that much to talk about. I still have to record my EP. I have it written, um, and I've been meaning to record this for like, a full year, so just bad at procrastinating. And then I put out this um, experimental project for fun this summer, which is just lo-fi beats. But I don't care about that. It's just fun. What? So it's like a it's like a, a, a project for you to, to, to come up with this stuff, or is it? Yeah, uh, I was just curious if people would listen to lo-fi beats, and they do. So and they do. Okay. The way her brain works is fascinating. It is to me. Yeah, it is absolutely. Fine. So you just did an entire project, just like wonder what this is gonna do. Yeah, love it. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Why? Why the reason would you need? To I be just. Honest? I think life is just. Um, life puts you in directions you don't expect, and then I true. like to do a bit of everything. I've been blessed that um, I've had training in a lot of different things, and I've been able to do a lot of different random things. And so for me, if I just have an idea that I like, I'm like, why not just try it and see what happens? Like, Where does that mm -hmm. fearless nature come from? Probably from being very scared of the ocean. <laughs> Probably compensates comes for back that. Around to the ocean. It comes I right get back it. around I, I get it. it. As scary as it is, it's not the ocean. No. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm afraid of heights. I'm afraid of flying. I'm afraid of... We being... talked about that a little bit. We, yeah. we share this this uh, fear of... Fear of flying? flying. Yeah. Oh, I, I fly all the time. I, I, do, no I, I did for a long time. I'm scared of it every time. Uh, and she's the same way. 
just it's like the whole Instagram versus reality thing. Yes. But the Instagram part is people see me travel a lot, and then the reality is me thinking I'm going to die every time I travel. So I've been on some planes where the rough turbulence. I was like, oh, we can be out. Yeah, we get out of this. Okay, I'm gonna beat the paramedics there by a half hour. This is crazy. I don't like this at all. <laughs> all right. So where uh, what's what was your upbringing like? Um, I had very strict parents. And then everyone in my family has a PhD except me. So Ooh, wow. that Ooh. wasn't any pressure or anything. Yeah. Um, my parents wanted me to go to Harvard, become a doctor or a lawyer, go to business school. I didn't do any of those things. Did you even get started in any of that? No, because I didn't wasn't interested. Why would I be interested in law? Mm -hmm. Though, to be honest, I think if I did law now, I would actually be good at it, but I wouldn't enjoy my life. The thing I do enjoy about law is reading contracts. I'm very good at reading contracts. I'll do it for fun, which is sad. But it is fun because um, I, I was reviewing a contract once that a lawyer sent me, and I caught 11 mistakes that he didn't. And I was like, who's passing the bar exam? I'm like, what, what's happening? You, she's good at everything. Yeah. She is. I'm I wish I had that contract later. I, I, if, I, I, uh, uh, I, I can't even color inside the lines. <laughs> so now where were you at? Where were you born and raised? I was born in China. And then my parents took me to the UK when I was three because they were doing their um, master's and PhDs in the UK. And then we eventually moved to the US because my dad um, I think got a job as a professor in upstate New York at the time. How long were you in the UK? I think until I was 10 or so. Brothers and sisters? No, only no? child. Only child? One child, China policy. Ah, uh, yeah. Really? Wow. You've not heard, apparently. I mean, heard. I've heard that, but yeah. I've never run into someone that. I think it's gone now. I think they, um, yeah, I think they changed maybe it. Maybe it's gone now. I don't know. I a couple so. of I don't know if it's still in play or not, but yeah, but I've heard about it. I have some friends that live over there, but yeah. So is that why so. people sometimes have a hard time pinpointing where you're from? Because certain words you say. I have a lot of friends in the UK, and I did radio in the UK for a mm -hmm. while, and there are certain words that you use that are very not the American pronunciation for that word i had to train to do an american accent when i moved her um and then eventually i got sick of that because it didn't feel very natural to me so i just gave up and now i just speak and then i think it's mostly american with a little bit of some of the uk yeah um yeah. but not very much i think it's still mostly american i can do a good completely american accent if i have to but i don't like to do that <laughs> but you used to do that when you moved here you were like i have to do this because i want to fit in no, that wasn't me. That was my parents and my teachers were like, this skull is going to get bullied because I had a very thick accent, which is probably why I still have um, somewhat of an accent. And then, um, yeah, I had a speech teacher. They told me to spell things differently. And I was like, this sucks. My first, um, I think my first impression of, of America, though, was when I left the UK, I was obsessed with Pokemon. And I was always watching the show. I had um, like a classic pokeball it had the dolls everything and then i was so anxious when i learned that we were moving to america because i was like i didn't think they had pokemon no little did so you know. i was traumatized by that i was like what and then the first thing when we checked into our hotel in the u.s there is um pokemon playing on the tv and i was like oh now everything's fine <laughs> i love that that's how simple it is when you're a kid like something can seem so daunting and then something just small puts you at ease to go, okay, this is going to be okay. Because when you're an adult, that doesn't work. Nope. All you just sweat every possible detail that you could possibly need. <laughs> Still like Pokemon? Um, It's, yeah. Came back around. It became very hot the last, like, well, COVID. Yeah. Well, I, I, now that all those cards back in the day are worth silly amounts of money now. That's crazy. Silly. I mean, everybody collected them, but I have, I, I never collected them, but I have a buddy that has drawers full of them, and he was telling me how much the oh, that's astronomical insane. amount of money Makes me feel were. bad for the baseball cards. I should have collected them. I should have collected them. I probably threw great ones away. Uh, so what led you to uh, BuzzFeed and journalism? What what led you into to wanting to do that? I was initially interested in book publishing because when I was in high school and even middle school all I did was write poetry so I was always interested in um, just writing poetry and then realized that that's not a lucrative career like no one pays anyone for that even famous poets they're not making a ton mm -hmm. through publishing their books so I was like okay so what can I do that's similar to that um, so then I was thinking book publishing um, so I was interested in the editorial side of that and um, which explains the contract the, the, the enjoying reading mm -hmm. contracts. But um, book publishing also doesn't make any money. 
So I, I did, I think, seven internships in book publishing um, while I was in undergrad. And then I saw this listing for a job at BuzzFeed that was dealing with the book section. So I did that internship and then I stayed on full time and then became um, one of the deputy editors for that. So I guess that's kind of how that turned out. But at least that paid more than book publishing and then kind of helped with everything else. What, what kind of skill sets did you pick up working at a because at what year was this for BuzzFeed? I think I started at BuzzFeed in 2014. So they were at the height mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. BuzzFeed. They were everywhere. YouTube. I mean, you couldn't you couldn't scroll the internet without seeing something from BuzzFeed. So what do you think you kind of learned or picked up from being around there? I think the most important thing was dealing with online harassment, actually. Mm. Um, I Just being in a place where you get treated as a public figure, even though I was just doing random stuff like writing lists, articles, quizzes, sometimes doing the videos. Like I didn't sign up to that job to be any sort of public figure, but because everyone was reading BuzzFeed at the time, I think I got like 30,000 Facebook followers on my personal page from that. Wow. Um, just from writing articles. Like that was because it was linked to my account. Um, just because you'd have it in a bio that you worked mm -hmm. at BuzzFeed, people would just... And people who get mad click through and go look at your Facebook. I had not even thought about that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, and then... On Twitter, also, like, BuzzFeed was really big on Twitter, yep. so I developed a Twitter following through that, and then people would get really mad on Twitter because there were a lot of people who hated BuzzFeed. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you tweeted about the wrong thing or even said anything innocuous, you could get a lot of hate. And I remember one time I just put out um, – I, I like to do a lot of troll posts on BuzzFeed just because I didn't take it that seriously. So I'd make – joke posts that were like um, Game of Thrones themed Halloween costumes you should do and every single one of them is a ghost costume because they all died <laughs> and then people got really upset about that and I would get death threats because they were really into Game of Thrones and they didn't like that and so oh, it was like their, I'm their following is yeah no and so people saw that and I would get messages on Facebook being like I'm gonna go find your doorstep and then take a dump on it and I was oh like my goodness. I live in an apartment so good luck but <laughs> <laughs> also, just so I would get like that kind of silly harassment and then also like genuine death threats just from really innocuous things like that because people are crazy and the internet is a big place. And when you're at a place at BuzzFeed that everyone's looking at, you're going to get some oh, of those yeah. people who are looking at your things. Um, I remember one was funny because um, so some of the lists I made were just compilations of funny tweets of other people. So right. I would put together these lists and one of them was, um, I think jokes about Jesus or like jokes about oh, something. You stepped into and religion. then oh. it wasn't even, it wasn't even my own words. It was like viral tweets about Jesus. Oh, and the, then oh, people yeah. could go out and find fairly easy. You just, yeah, admitted it I just, I just compiled right. them, had zero commentary about this. A lady, um, sent me a message on Facebook about how this was so terrible and against everything she believed in. And then she wrote, I think, it, or tried to write an email to Jonah, um, the CEO of BuzzFeed at the time, to get me fired. <laughs> I was like, I just put some tweets other people thought were really, funny. I just curated some content here. I didn't like, yeah, I didn't like go out and craft any This wasn't even editorial. So, Wow. Uh, so you go from BuzzFeed. What, what was the next stop for you? Um, so I ended up trying to do acting as a hobby while I was at BuzzFeed. The reason why that happened was I got invited to – a TV party a couple of times. And at one of these parties, I think it was like a season three or four launch party for a show called Younger, um, which is about book publishing. So I showed up and they had this just buffet of oysters, lobster, shrimp cocktails. And I was like, I should be at more of these things because I really like eating those things. And so then I think that day signed up for like an acting account and started getting into it because <laughs> just I just- Just to get into parties. No, well, no, I was trying to get into more free oysters. That's actually what happened. <laughs> You're like, if I'm signed up to do this, maybe I'll get yeah, invited to Yeah, I was like, I do... would like more shrimp cocktails. I eventually became allergic to shrimp. That's how much I was eating it. So uh, That's a lot of shrimp. I don't know how much you have to eat, but I know it's a lot. Yeah. I love shrimp. I'm going to eat it my wife's a, My wife loves shrimp, oh, so I get enough. it. If I ever become a multimillionaire, the first thing I want to do is pay a gastroenterologist to tell me if I'm still allergic to shrimp. Yeah, because like you don't want to shrimp. roll the dice at this point. No, but it's out. expensive. A specialist to do that is mm -hmm. expensive. So, Okay, so we go from uh, acting in your spare time as a hobby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
when when did when does the social media influencer entrepreneur thing when does that start to become so something? while I was at BuzzFeed, I already started developing a smaller following. Um, a lot, I think, yeah, I think I got like thirty thousand on Facebook at that time. So some of that was also on Instagram. Some of that was also on Twitter. Um, so that definitely helped. And then before I left, I started appearing in some of their videos on YouTube as well. Um, but then when I was doing the acting, I was like, the jobs were so easy. You would just because I was doing commercial walk and then some extra walks. I was like, you just get paid to show up. And then you don't have to write things or edit things. You just show up and they pay you. And I was like, this is great. I should do more of this. Um, and then I eventually got into modeling as well by accident um, because I think when I was looking for acting jobs, I saw a casting call for a fashion show. So I applied for that, did that, and then started doing more modeling work. Um, and then the people at Busby didn't like that I was like using my free time doing this. So I eventually had to make a decision between pursuing modeling acting full time or staying at BuzzFeed. Um, so I chose to just focus on entertainment. That's it. Was that a big jump? It was definitely freeing, I have to say. Wow. Okay. Um, because I was leaving, a, I guess, 10 to 6 or 9 to 5, and then being able to set my own schedule and pick what projects um, I would take on. I think the biggest thing for me was when I walk for myself in any capacity, all of the time that I'm spending, all the effort, I know exactly that that's right. going back towards me and my career, whereas all the time I was putting in a BuzzFeed is going towards a product I don't own. So to me, I felt much more fulfilled being able to work in my own projects. Wow, that makes sense. Yeah. So Impressive. You, yeah. <laughs> you're wise beyond your years. Very. I uh, just really wanted that shrimp cocktail. <laughs> I, listen, I, sometimes it's the small wins that, that drive the ship, mm -hmm. like just having the small goals. Uh, looking at looking at everything that you've done and everything that you have your hand in, what do you think is the thing you enjoy doing the most? I definitely enjoy doing music the most. I think that's the one thing where if I'm playing an instrument for hours on end or trying to write a song, I can be lost in that for eight hours and not realize it, and it doesn't feel like walk. So I think that's definitely the thing I would say I'm most passionate about. Um, How many instruments do you play? Um, I was trained in piano and violin. I taught myself ukulele and guitar, and then I sing. Wow. What do your parents think of all this? I mean, they want they wanted me to be like a doctor or a lawyer. So I think initially they were like, what is BuzzFeed? And then my distant relatives had no idea what BuzzFeed was because they're in China and obviously it's blocked. Right. So I don't think they cared about it then. But then once they realized that I can get them free things through social media, then they were more on board. And they were like, <laughs> can you use Instagram to get me a car? And I was like, possibly. And they're like, oh, we're so proud. <laughs> and you say that we're like so proud of you now. there was a cultural barrier for some of this was that was that what you were having to kind of navigate with i mean a bit but i don't even think it was necessarily cultural because um 20 years ago you would never think you could make a career or make money doing anything with the internet because mm -hmm. it just wasn't a viable career option mm -mm. and now people are making full decent sometimes really amazing livings just doing videos on YouTube, doing podcasts. None of these things really existed to the extent they do now. Mm -hmm. And some don't exist at all. TikTok wasn't around. Um, so I think them having doubts about, like, what is the longevity of Yeah, the are you going to be you okay? Have, You're going to be able to make a living? That they, they really wanted me to go back to doing more of a typical job or even finding something in corporate. But um, I think once I tasted that shrimp cocktail life, didn't really look back. So. Mm -hmm. I just envision you at one time being the weird one at the Thanksgiving or Christmas when they're everybody's talking about what they do, and then it eventually it's like <laughs> you're the one everybody yeah. wants to talk to, <laughs> like the PhDs and the lawyers and everything. It doesn't matter near as much. Does it feel like that now? Where you? I you, feel like I'm like cool, but less educated. I That's mean, I, not I, a terrible thing, it's Jerry. No, yeah, it's not. <laughs> I, ha I have a bachelor's degree. I actually did very well academically. I just don't have a master's or PhD, which is fine because I think I'm... Is it a, fine or does it bother you? It doesn't because I my lifestyle is very easy. Um, I don't have very much stress. I think I had to take a test the other day for some um, like therapy app I'm doing a campaign for, and it was measuring your stress level, and I had like low stress, low anxiety, low depression. I was like, oh, life is great. <laughs> I guess clinically I'm doing okay. So 
Uh, no, I think my, my stress level is very low. It'd be way higher if I were doing law or medicine Agreed. or anything. I don't think I'd be happy doing those things. And I, I'm grateful that I'm able to express myself creatively, that some people are interested in that, and that I kind of just get to pick what to do or try. What, kind of, what type of people you like to surround yourself with? To surround myself with? Yeah. Um, mostly creative people. That could be in music or just in fashion or really any type of, of creativity. But some of my best friends that I've had since university um, are doing things like law and medicine, which is how I know firsthand the stress level. Mm -hmm. So you, you can look at it modeled and go... Yeah, I don't need that. Yeah, I mean, there are people who cry every day and they're making maybe like half a million a year owning um, multi million dollar apartments. Um, but I don't think it's worth the stress level, honestly. I think, I think something you, you undersell is the like leaps of faith that you have taken through this journey that a lot of people just would not do. No, don't have the courage to do, to try half of what you've already done, which is impressive, man. Like, wow. Like, I feel like you're uh, remember the movie, the matrix when they yes. put Neo in the chair and he's yes. like, I know Kung Fu. I feel like you're that person <laughs> that could sit down and learn something that quick and be, and just be a master at it. It's, it's impressive. Dude. And we've been asking a lot of people, you know, that we, we have no idea who's going to watch these podcasts and where they are in life and what they're going through. But, if there's somebody out there that is that leap of faith is just looks so daunting Scary, yeah. and you 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 carry yourself in a way that it just seems like it's so easy how do you from a mindset perspective go okay this is the thing i am now going to do even if this would be more comfortable from the outside in and easier i'm going to go do this hard thing i think people care too much about everything but specifically about their lives and i mean no you should care about your life 100 percent. i mean <laughs> people account too much about a life plan or what they have for life goals and i think ultimately what i realized is um my my family had such a strict life plan that they wanted for me and i didn't meet it because i was waitlisted at harvard i didn't do all the things they wanted i didn't go into medicine i didn't go into law um so i didn't meet that and i was able to kind of create or not even create I just fell into this life plan that just happened um and then going from one career to another that I wasn't planning or expecting or anything I, I learned that you're going to be taken into a direction that you don't expect and you can either go along with it or you can fight against it and try to stick to a rigid life plan but that's probably not is what going is that's probably not what's going to happen anyway um like things are always happening and so if you ultimately believe, which is what I believe, that um, what is meant for you is meant for you, then I don't think you need to have fear about what you're doing in life because you'll either end up at a place you want to be. And if you don't end up there, then I believe you'll end up at a place that's meant for you. Mm -hmm. um, and that could be even greater than you could have expected or it's going to teach you lessons that you needed to learn. Um, but ultimately, like, life I think is so fluid and to have any sort of rigid idea about like I need to have these goals and do xyz by this age um it's just not going to happen unless you make it happen then that's fine but I think I just don't care about what I'm doing in the sense that um I could be doing something completely different in five to ten years and I believe I would still be happy doing that so I'm okay with just doing random things, trying random projects, like launching lo-fi beats and seeing what happens because um, I'm just along for the ride. So I don't have very much anxiety about what I'm doing in life because of that. So I think if someone feels anxiety about whether they should take a leap of faith or not, it's do you believe that you're, whatever you're doing in life, like you'll be eventually in a safe place. You'll be in a place where you grow and learn. And if you do believe that, then there's nothing to be afraid of. Because then you can take that leap of faith, and if it doesn't walk out, then it wasn't meant to be, and maybe you'll end up doing something else. But if it was meant to walk out, then that's great. Just, what a great way to look at that. Your failure is your best teacher. I love it. <laughs> like, just keep on trying. Last Go thing I've it. got, what's love something it. about you that people would be surprised to learn? Hmm. I I definitely grew up very shy. Um, so I, I do still keep parts of my life private. Like, I don't really share stuff with my close friends. I mean, like, Publicly, I don't really talk about my friends publicly um, or even my relationship. Um, 
Hmm. I don't know. It's a weird food that you crave. Ooh. Yeah. Like give us what is your go to oh, weird snack? I would say the thing people judge me for the most is the McDonald's filet of fish. I love those. I, I, it's I, amazing. I, it's the most grossest. I've I never will had tear up a filet of fish. Oh my. I, I, and everybody makes fun of me because I it's a It's a childhood nostalgia thing because I'd always have it on road trips with my parents. Mm-hmm. Um, but then as an adult, every time I order it, it's just not good. But I still like it as a as a concept. It but tastes it's, like it's your child. It tastes good. like home. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like the fish is too chewy. Yes. The bread's not quite right. Um, I'm it's, 100% sure it's not fish. <laughs> yeah, but I like the concept of it. It's good. I love, I love fish it. sandwiches. Yeah. I love it. Uh, the Real Vibe Podcast, Jerry Lee in the house. Thanks so much. Thanks, Ryder. Thank you for having me. It's been fun. It's been fun. All right, we're out. <laughs> <laughs>